What's up again there guys, Brighton here at 3TR and welcome to episode 199 of my weekly Q&A show, Tile of the People's Questions, where I answer the awesome questions that my viewers have sent me over the past week. This time, rather, we got a very, very, very big episode with a lot of questions from, I believe, nothing but regulars, which is awesome in my opinion. So don't forget into them. The first two questions come from Santico Scarpino, and you want to know, which is scarier, Nemesis or Ustanak? I definitely think that Usnek is a lot more scarier because he is basically just a raging, berserking juggernaut, which doesn't really stop. Um, and I would say he's he's also scary because I believe he's a lot harder to take down. You have to remember that Nemesis, I mean, although he, he is carrying a giant rocket launcher and he is carrying a minigun that carries about 5,000 rounds, and when he evolves to his next form, he then becomes like a raging berserker, the Usnek is like the Terminator but on steroids. I mean, this thing is like a, this, the, has the power of a train, so th there's really no way to, to, to stop that except to run away. I, I mean, you can't realistically fight the Ustanak on even grounds unless you're, like, you're a superhuman like Jake Muller is. So I would definitely be more afraid to fight the Ustanak than Nemesis, so that's my decision. Your next question is, which is my favorite mission from every Assassin's Creed the game that I have played? That is impossible to answer because all the missions on in Assassin's Creed games that I've played are pretty much the same. I mean, they all have the same plot, even though they take place in different time periods and they were they revolve around different characters. You're pretty much doing the same thing. You're going around, you're assassinating people, you're you know, you're protecting certain people, and, and so there's I can't really think of too many missions that were unique to that game. I really stand out. I mean, one has you, you know, protect. I, so I guess the only missions I can think of off the top of my head are any missions that aren't in any other Assassin's Creed game. So like something in Black, Fa Black Flag, uh, which is my favorite, would be probably a mission that would have been, uh, you know, revolved around being on the sea. Or uh, in Assassin's Creed 3, something that involved uh, guiding the colonial army uh, against the British. Or in a... Um, I believe uh, maybe in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood or Revelations when you get to send your assassins out to take out the other people and watch maybe a couple of badasses. So I I think the only mission, so pretty much any mission that's not in any other Assassin's Creed game would probably stand out to me, even though I can't really name the exact mission for that particular game. The next next question comes from Draven G, and you want to know, what are my thoughts on the Final Fantasy VII Remake being split into episodes? I believe I answered this in the last episode, and I think people are taking this whole it's in episodes a little bit out of proportion. I think what they mean is that there's, they want to tell the complete Final Fantasy story, but it's not just focused on the main Final Fantasy game. You have to remember that there are other, uh, there are other games in the Final Fantasy VII lore, and I think that's what they want to do in episodes, which I, I'm pretty sure is going to be DLC content. So there might be a section of the game which revolves around Crisis Core, which centers around Zack, so that might be another episode. I do believe that the main core game of Final Fantasy VII, I believe that will be one complete intact game. Uh, but there might be another episode that is reminiscent of Dirge Cerberus, which is going to focus on Vincent. Um, there might be another one that involves uh, events in Adrian Children, so th that, that's another episode. So I think that's what they mean by episodes. I hope I'm right, because I don't think it makes much sense to take an awesome game like Final Fantasy, which is a complete intact game, and break it up into pieces. Uh, especially if you're going to do different things. I don't, I don't want them to do what t Tall Tale Tales has been doing, because I, I just hate that style of gaming, because you're pretty much paying for a you're, you're paying a large portion of money for an incomplete experience and I want a full experience right from the get-go so I think that's what they mean by episodes the next three questions come from Ace Arcade and he wants to know what is my take on the Mortal Kombat 10 combat pack characters uh, I, I think it's okay I mean a couple characters I wasn't expecting I mean riding Leatherface Alien and Bo Raiju uh, which is interesting because you know Bo Bo I am not I wasn't really too surprised by because he he is in the game. He's, I mean even though he's a non playable character, so they want to make him playable. Uh, but I think adding Alien is definitely interesting because I'm like, 
Well, now you can have a proper Alien vs. Predator matchup, so that's that's pretty cool. I really wish that they 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 had added um, Freddy because I mean we've used Freddy before. Why don't we use him again? I I think we we could finally have a proper Freddy vs. Jason matchup online, so that'd be pretty cool. So uh, as far as the next pack, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be picking it up when it comes out. I, I think it's pretty cool. Your next question is. Can I name three of the worst letdowns in entertainment this year from games, movies, trailers, etc.? Your choice. Uh, letdowns. Yeah. Uh, Metal Solo 5, that was a major letdown. Um, Fantastic Four, that was a letdown. And I guess the next letdown is something I don't want to talk about on my channel anymore. But chances are most of you have seen it today, so that's all I'll say about it on the matter. The next question is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how well did the PlayStation 4 in 2015 do, in my opinion? On a scale of 1 to 10, I would give it a 7.5. I don't recall playing any games that I thought really made me stand out this year, besides maybe be um, Until Dawn. Uh, but I definitely had a lot of fun playing it, although I was playing my PlayStation 3 a little bit more like I did last year. So I think another year of gaming, especially from what I know is coming out in 2016, will you know definitely get me focusing more on my PlayStation 4 than my PlayStation 3. So I'll give it a 7.5. Next question comes from Mark Hitman, and you want to know, do I watch any abridged series videos? Oh yes, uh, I watch um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. Uh, love that series, even though I think it's over by now. Uh, the most recent one I, that I've been absolutely hooked on is a uh, Slap on Titan. I believe they're uploading uh, maybe episode 16 on Christmas, but if you guys have not seen it, you need to check it out because I'm a big Attack on Titan fan and they, they know how to make it even funnier. Despite the fact that the next season of Attack on Titan is still not out yet, which, why, it's, I, I think it's taken them way too long. I need to get this sucker out now and to see what happens next, even though I've already read the manga and know what happens, but I want to see it in, you know, anime form, so, yeah. The next questions come from Zyborg136, and you want to know, what are my thoughts on virtual reality and gaming, and how well do I think it will go? Well, technically, I know for a fact we've actually tried virtual reality uh, in the past, and it just didn't look that great. Um, but nowadays, the, the technology is, is better. Um, I think it's going to be a funny gimmick, but just like so many gimmicks in the past, I think it's going to fade probably before the end of this current generation of gaming. Uh, I, I just don't... I, I, can, I can see the benefits of virtual reality in terms of giving you a unique experience, but I just don't think there's anything you can do that really will beat the experience of having a console and having control of your hand and just playing it on your television. I, that's the experience that it's always been. Even if you go back to the old Atari 2600, that's how it always was. You had a console, you had a controller, you had a TV. Play. I mean... I mean, the whole innovating how you play games, and that's more of a Nintendo way of thinking, but even they admit that the core way of gaming is the best way to play games. So, you know, I'm sure there might be a game or two that, you know, takes advantage of virtual reality gaming, but again, I just think it will fade away before the end of this generation, and we'll, next generation will still be playing video games with a controller and a console like we always have. The next question is, do I think they will make Resident Evil 2 like Resident Evil 4, as in the same style and gameplay mechanics? I hope they do. I mean, this was the main reason I didn't want to play the uh, remastering of Resident Evil 1 and why I'm not going to be getting Resident Evil 0, is because they have, they're, 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 it's pretty much a remastered version of those old games, and everything from those games is present, and a lot, I just hate that gameplay mechanic. It's terrible. It has terrible controls. The camera angles are bullshit. The gameplay is bullshit. Even though it's original, I understand that, and people do love that. I understand that people want to go back and play its roots, but you have to understand something, is that I did not start playing Resident Evil to Resident Evil 4, so that is my Resident Evil experience. That's how I want to play games, and that's continued on from 4, from four 5, 6, Revelations 1 and 2. That's how I want to play Resident Evil game. If you can give me that kind of experience in the older games, I'm more than happy to play them over again. But if they're going to stick to that old school style, then that's something I don't want to experience a second time. I played through those older games, I didn't enjoy beating them the first time, and I don't want to play them again now. You give me a new experience, you give me another, a new way to play those games, I'll give it a chance. 
The next question is, how would I rank the Resident Evil games from best to worst? <sighs> okay, I'm going to stick to the main series. I'm, I'm not going to throw in things like Code Veronica or, uh, you know, uh, Outbreak or Revelations. But if I can stick to the main six games, it would be... I'll start from best to worst. It would be... Four, two, six, five, three, one. That that's how I ranked them. I, I did not really like Resident Evil One or Three that much, but the fact I've only had to play them because due to research purposes. The next three questions come from Phil the Darkness March, and you want to know who do I think would win in a fight between the Independence Day aliens and the Covenant? Um Well, I think the Covenant are more warrior based. But I don't know. You, you you can't really you can't really knock a, an alien species that has a ship, which shields are very very powerful and impenetrable from projectile weapons, which the Covenant do use, uh, and their ships can level entire cities. And from what we've seen in the new trail, it looks like they're going to be even more powerful and more dangerous. And the fact that the aliens from Independent Day have telepathic abilities, and I'm not really sure if the Covenant have any real defense against that. I mean, I know that there are some members that have that power too, but do the Covenants as a, as a whole have a resistance to telepathic influence? That uh, alone might be able to cripple the Covenant, in my opinion. So I think the Independence Day aliens, despite them not being a warrior class, I think they're a little bit more dangerous simply because they can influence the battlefield a lot more than the Covenant do, which were, which they do mostly rely on straight brute force. Next question is, what do I think of Zootopia? I've never heard of Zootopia. What the hell is it? Next question. The new Independence Day trailer is epic, and I think the movie will be the same. What do I think of it? Oh, well, it definitely looks uh, interesting. Uh, I think it's, I, I mean, I think it's it, it's kind of uh, perfect that they're releasing this movie 20 years after the events of the first one, and yet the movie takes place, you know, exactly 20 years. So it's kind of like, we'll be, <laughs> that's the funny thing about Independence Day, it's like, if you actually, if you actually saw it when it originally came out, then it's kind of funny, like, you're, you're kind of experiencing the moment as it's, supposed to be happening right now, so if you're in the theater, technically the world should be completely <laughs> destroyed, and we're about, to, we're about to go through that again. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'll definitely be seeing it. It's definitely one of my most anticipated movies uh, of, of next year. Um, I just hope it, it, it's entertaining. I'm not so much as uh, upset about Will Smith not being in it, even though I, you know, they told us what happened to his character, which, you know, I think is a little bit cheap, but, you know, you know, we we all gotta move on, but yeah, um, I I I I'm not sure it's gonna be epic, but I really did enjoy the first Independence Day, so I'm just hoping that I can enjoy this one just as much, if not more. And the next set of questions come from the Elite Helgen. And you want you want to know, and this was a long question. What do I think of Hideo Kojima joining PlayStation, starting up his own independent company, and what type of titles do I think he'll create in the future? Well, in terms of what titles he's going to make, I don't really care what he's going to make, because it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be better than anything we're going to get from Konami, which I've stated many times, I have no plans on buying any of their games ever from this point on, regardless of what media it is. But I'm ex even more excited that he's decided to go with Sony, because I think he's had a much better experience with Sony than Microsoft. I think he acknowledges that, you know, the PlayStation is the more popular system, it is the more powerful one, and it's the one that probably gives him much more flexibility to, play, to try out the games that he wants to make. Uh, and I'm aware that, that these games are also going to be, I think the first one's going to be, like, port to PC, which I'm, I'm perfectly fine with. But yeah, I, I'm happy that he's going with Sony. I mean, Sony's my brand, so stick to what you know, what he knows is PlayStation. It's never let him down in the past, and I'm happy that he's going to be making games exclusively for them, so I'm I'm excited. I'm ecstatic for it. The next three questions come from Thighnapping Sniper, and you want to know, how do I feel about Samurai Jack, the new season on Adult Swim? Well, I'm, I'm curious why they want to bring in Samurai Jack now, because I heard, I remember not too long ago, there was rumors that they might do a Samurai Jack movie, which I think that would have been pretty awesome. But I'm curious if this is going to be a reboot, or is it going to be a continuation of the story we know? Because as far as I know, I don't recall the original Samurai Jack um, show ever having a, a solid ending. 
So is it this going to be something that we have to watch the old season, the old Samurai Jack show again to get, to get caught up, or is this going to be a, a brand new take on the story itself? That's just, those just come the couple of questions that I have for the show. But yeah, Heckley, if if I ever get a chance to watch some of the episodes, I'll definitely check them out. Um, if I'm if I'm home at the time. The next question is: Do I think that Star Wars thirteen thirteen or when and does it come out will it still follow fit or a new character? Well, if Disney does want to bring back Star Wars 1313. I don't think it's going to be the game we all saw in those little tech demos. Because if I recall correctly, 1313 was going to be the first M-rated uh, Star Wars game, which really had me excited for it. I mean, I would I would love to see an M-rated Star Wars game, and I would love to see a rated R Star Wars movie, even though I know that's never going to happen. Uh, but... If it were to follow Bubble Fett, that could still be interesting, uh, or a new character. The question is, what time period is it going to be taking place? Is it going to be taking place, you know, during the original movies, the prequel movies, or this new timeline set of movies? Uh, that's what I'd like to know first before I make a final judgment on whether or not I would like to play this new Star Wars 13 again. Your last, your last question is, will I try to go to E3 2016? Absolutely. Um, I... I I, I try. I tried to go the the past two years, uh, but I think the channel is still not popular enough. I mean, I've already set a like a goal for what I want to do for next year, and I believe that if I can hit that goal, I think it'll give me more attention to people who might want me to represent them uh, in the gaming community or gaming companies. And I think if I can get that kind of attention then that will definitely increase my chances of going to E3 2016. I mean, uh, I've said many, 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 many times, when I went to E3 back in 2013, that was really the hap one of the happiest experience of my life because I finally got to experience something that I want to do for a living. And this only, conc this, this only solidified that this is what I want to do as a lifestyle. This is what I want to do as a career. I want to have an opportunity to go to these conventions so I can be surrounded by people who are there for the same reasons that I am. Uh, so, yeah, rest assured, I will be busting my ass to see if I can get back to E3 2016, because, it, it, you know, it, 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 it would be another life-changing experience for me. And the last question of the episode comes from Angel of Death, and you want to know, what PlayStation 2 games would I like them to add to a playable PlayStation 4 lineup? Uh, I'll name five off the top of my head. Alright, play as far as PlayStation 2 games, I would love to see them do Black. I would love for them to do Kill Switch. I thought that was a pretty. I think that was like one of the first cover-based shooters I ever played that was ever made, in my opinion. Uh, we already got Ratchet and Clank that on PlayStation Three, so we don't need that. We don't need the Budokai games that they did that on PlayStation Three, also. Uh, we don't need Shadow the Claw. You know, I, 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 I gotta be honest. I, in terms of games I would like, uh, they, they pretty much did all of those games I would have wanted on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 3, and I own them all. I mean, so, uh, any, really, the, the better set of games that I've enjoyed for PlayStation 2, I've already mostly rebought. So, I really don't need them on the PlayStation 4 because I can play them on the PlayStation 3, and I've already bought them. So, Outside of Black, that's the only one I can really think of that has not been ported over to the next systems that I know I would love to play. And with that, those are all the questions that you guys sent for this episode. Uh, wow, I gotta say, this episode was a lot longer than I thought it would be. I'd like to thank all of you guys for making this episode possible. Uh, some of you may know, next Friday will be episode 200. So I really want to do something special. So aside from your questions that you guys may have for next week's episode, if you guys have any great ideas that you would like me to do for episode 200 to celebrate the occasion, please share them with me in the comments down below. Uh, the only idea that I've come up with that I discovered recently is that I can actually record my gameplay footage that I play on my PlayStation 4 directly to YouTube so I could do like, I don't know, like a 30 minute or an hour long you know, Q and A while I'm playing a video game in the in the in the corner. So I think that might be an, an idea. But if you guys have any ideas, again, share with me in the comments down below. If you like this video, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to check me on future episodes of people's questions. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I will see you next time.